At long last, Meave spotted a dark form spanning the river's course, Red Lobindon's Bridge. Just a brief stretch more and the Lyrians would find themselves beyond the invader's grasp, free and clear of bogs and the beasts that prowled them. Yet joy at this sight soon gave way to despair. The bridge was dark, black, from the horde of Nilfgaardians that held it. Clearly the Blackclads had divined the path of Meave's flight and had cut off her last means of escape. That's it. We're dead men. All! They'll cut us down to the last! Meave shut her eyes, felt them sting with fatigue. She knew when she turned she could not show her men one ounce of fear, one pinch of doubt. She gripped her reins tightly. The leather dug into her skin, helping her hold back her tears. And when the queen finally spoke, her voice was strong and boomed over the river's roar. I know what you wish to hear. The queen began. That the gods watch over us. That we'll come through the fray unharmed. That a friendly force is but moments away. Those would be lies. The truth is as bitter as it is undeniable. We stand cornered. Cannot win this fight, cannot flee it. We can but choose how to die. Hanged from the boughs like common criminals, or weapons in hand like the fighters we are. I've made my choice. Time you made yours! With that cry, Meave broke for the bridge toward a forest of spears into a deluge of arrows. She let the tears fall from her eyes. Tears of rage, fear, fatigue. It was not until she'd almost reached the enemy line that she dared glance backward, and she saw she was not alone. Defend the Queen! Valyria! We may die here today, but not on our hands and knees! <laughs> Don't shoot! Don't shoot! We're friend, not foe! Damn it, just gets better and better. To the bridge! Cut the way back to the bridge! Bolster the defense! Fall back! Blow it! Meave was victorious on the banks of the Yuruga, but paid dearly for it. She lost a host of men and suffered harm herself. Yet she'd have been doomed if not for a certain white-haired witcher. Meave longed to meet her mysterious savior and set off in search of him as soon as the battle dust had settled. She found him with the field surgeon and learned he was none other than the Witcher Geralt. Yes, incredible as it may seem, I've heard the tale from several and can vouch for its truth. At any rate, making naught of the fact that Geralt's ears were ringing from a blow with a mace, Meave began immediately to interrogate him. You for Fabe Bridge? Asked Meave, prodding him insistently. For a spell, Geralt worried his hearing was shot, but then realized the Queen had a lisp. Worked out that way, I guess. You guess? <laughs> Meave gagged on the blood in her mouth. Someone hold me! The Queen felt Geralt merited the highest honor, a knighthood. Another monarch might have delayed until a more opportune time, but not Meave. Meave delayed nothing. Count Odo, you, sir, do the honors. Alas, I cannot because of my tooth. For valor shown in battle, I, Meave, by the gods' grace, Queen of Lyria and Rivia, hereby do knight thee. Geralt of praise unknown, the bridge you felled with men from Rivia, or for you guess. <laughs> I guess it falls to me to dub the Geralt of Rivia. Meave had come home, though by a circuitous route, through Edern's smoking embers, Angren's beast infested quagmires, cross Mahakam's snow capped ridges. But she had returned, cloaked in legend, a mighty army in tow. The moment was weighty and not to be tainted even by Geralt of Rivia's disappearance, or dare we say desertion. The hero of the battle for the bridge was now a sought man. Yet Meave was determined to take back her realm, with or without the Witcher's aid. 
The Lyrians' daring escapade behind enemy lines and the triumphant victory at the battle for the bridge that crowned it breathed new life into the North's war effort. Bands of resistance fighters now swarmed the conquered lands, while Kedwin and Redania, on the verge of swearing fealty to the Emperor, suddenly broke off talks with the invader. The Nilfgaardian war machine suddenly screeched to a halt, and the tide of war turned. Facing a united north, the invader had to withdraw the bulk of its forces from Lyria and Rivia. The way was cleared for Meave to retake her lost lands, defeat General Epdahi, and depose Willem. Or perhaps mother and son would not have to fight after all. Milady, I come at King Willem's bidding. Prince Willem's. <clears throat> His Majesty proposes a meeting. No arms, no escorts. His Majesty? Welp's barely tall enough to reach his mother's bosom. For shame! Silence. Let him say his piece. His Majesty, Willem I, wishes to discuss the possibility of a truce. He wishes to surrender. Is that his aim? Your words, not mine, Your Grace. I have a few more on the tip of my tongue. But save them I shall for later. <clears throat> Willem I's chosen the site for the parley. In... Willem I will choose Nout. If he wishes to speak, let him meet me midst the ruins of Devil's Tower. Understood, Your Grace. I'll relay your terms. Willem's emissary rode off, serenaded by hisses and jeers. Frightened by the clamor, his horse reared and kicked. The rider forced his mount to obey with cracks of his crop, striking many more times than was necessary. The fool. Nagel toss him off first chance it gets. Soon as he loosens the reins. No great loss, I wager. But tell me, your thoughts on this reunion? Sounds a ruse to me. But I know that won't stop you. Whence this certainty? Come now, me. At the end of it all, he's your son. You still care about him, it's obvious. Yes, I care dearly, Gascon. I care to capture him and try him for treason. Meave, the boy was manipulated. It took no great push. Let's go, they await us. Meave rode out clad in golden plate, her banners waving proudly overhead. She no longer led a band of ragtag partisans, but an army able to fend off an empire and drive its soldiers from her lands. <laughs>